I want to get to the bottom of this world that we live in. What else is out there? I don't really know how much I believe in psychics. They're an asshole. They're taking too much energy from you. I think I astral projected into <laughs> someone's body in Michigan. <laughs> Like, you you know, feed into it. Like, I hope and I pray that all of a sudden you have to be like, I believe. When we step into the light, we see the soul. So today is our last day of filming this documentary, an investigation. As you guys know, today we are visiting the one and only Gina Canone. She's a medium. She's a psychic. She is a, an amazing painter. She's a pianist. She is a magician. No, I'm kidding. Could you imagine? About <laughs> since she like starts fucking like pulling stuff out of her sleeve. It's never ending. Um, anyways, not the point. <laughs> point is, I want to start off today by giving our believometers from last week after we met with Sal. Uh, before we left, we gave believo meters. I said mine was seven. Today, after experiencing things, I would say mine is a nine. And I think and I say it's a nine because I don't want to say ten just just to you know savor that moment for tonight. In, in, if, if if that happens. What are you at? Point two. You're less than you were last I'm time? Less than last time. The more talk about this these two guys that go into this woman's brain and help her write stories. Schizophrenia! And I didn't believe a lot of things Sal said, so. <laughs> even for like, even for this relationship, it's almost too settled. It's, it's not, it's not doing anything. Um, like a three or four, like a 3.5. That's what it's at, that's where I'm at. 3.5? Yep. <laughs> All right. I am at a five. Ooh! So Literally after meeting down. with Rob mm -hmm. and then Sal, they found their balance. Mm -hmm. And I did actually connect with a lot of things that Sal said. Mm. So I'm hoping that after this investigation, I find my balance too. But the other thing, the other thing that we gotta talk about that is ook the spook. So I know we dealt with Greg's favorite topic of astral projection. And I know I shared my story that no one believes. Oh. Even, even I editing it, it was funny. When I was editing it, I remember texting you guys and I said, I look fucking crazy. <laughs> I sent the meme of the uh, ancient aliens guy going, it was aliens. <laughs> because I literally felt like that's me. I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> so, but because I was so curious while I was editing about astral projection, I wondered, is there like a Facebook group on this shit? So I went to facebook.com slash astral projection. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, so, um, Plot twist, there is this big group that has hundreds of thousands of members. I'm going through, going through, you know, having a good laugh. And then the, and then this one catches my eye and I'm like, what was I about sleep paralysis? <laughs> I um, had sleep paralysis. <laughs> so, as you know, in the last documentary, <laughs> Dana shared <laughs> her face right now. I was paralyzed, could not move. Okay, so you guys know that Dana shared her story about her sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis is a form of astral projecting. And 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 basically this person went this whole, whole rant about, so this, I just happened to astral project five minutes ago, and it was my first real experience <laughs> after an intense sleep paralysis with awful hallucinations. The experience was so intense, I never imagined it would be as vivid as I was told it was. It was a literal out-of-body experience. I started flying outside of my house and I saw objects in the corners of my room and I began opening all of my doors and drawers. <laughs> all of the doors in my room other than the one leading 
outside of my room were open, and so were all the drawers. No <laughs> way. <laughs> Until I returned to my into in, into my body. You're kind of dreaming, so you like hallucinate almost. <laughs> Dana, I think you actual projected. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Plot twist. Sleep paralysis sometimes means that you actual project, and because you're seeing things in your room, it's because you're you're out of your body and you're seeing the things that are also out of body. So again, the one person okay. that doesn't believe in this at all is experiencing it the most. I. I. Mm. She'll process it in the car in the way she's gonna. Yeah. Why aren't shrooms and psychedelics connected? To the rest They're of the room. They're just there. Oh, no, the teeth fell off. Oh, okay. <laughs> when did that happen? Was that like the whole time? Yeah. So, some people claim that when they take psychedelics like shrooms, acid, LSD, DMT, it opened up the mind, and that is why the government has made it illegal to take these things because the government knows it unlocks your mind to allow you to see other universes and just the way the world should be. Um, and a lot of people take psychedelics while they're meditating and while they're doing yoga. I know people who use marijuana and cannabis while they're doing yoga and meditation because it helps relax people. I don't know too much about this stuff because it's really hard to find stuff online and that's why Rob's gonna come here and tell us what he thinks because he believes in this kind of stuff. And I'm gonna share my getting drugged with shroom story. So that's gonna be really fun too. So, so they're called psychedelics to make them sound better? Exactly. <laughs> Is it going? Mm -hmm. Is the mic on? Yes. As you know, part of the conspiracy board is psychedelics, astral plane, and shrooms. Conveniently enough, Rob has, so you can pan to New Year's for Rob, has had experience with um, said psychedelics. DMT, acid, and salvia. Okay. Uh, what are those? Because I actually, I remember you tried to explain DMT to me one time. Uh, okay, yeah, so DMT is uh, it's a naturally occurring chemical, and you actually have this chemical in your brain as well. Um, and uh, some people attribute DMT to what you see if you're having a near-death experience, you see a white light, some people believe that's DMT. But in a concentrated form, you can uh, smoke it, you can make it into a tea, consume it, and it will basically um, give you a trip for up to maybe 15 minutes or so. And a lot of people who use DMT will say that they experience um, leaving their body, going to a different plane of existence. Maybe they're talking to, um, you know, beings of light or something like that. Um, people refer to DMT as the spirit molecule because people believe that because DMT exists in so many things, it's not just in our brains, it's in the brains of animals, it's, it's in flora, it's found in fauna, it's found in pretty much everything that's alive, this chemical exists. As a result of that is one of these things that connects us all. Or some people experience the sensation of blasting off, leaving this plane of existence, and just having a completely different experience. Mm -hmm. That's not an experience that I've had. Mm -hmm. I've never blasted off on DMT. I've never had that experience. But well, I'll tell you about um, a DMT trip that I had. It was at sort of like a bonfire night. Um, a bunch of people. Uh, this was when I was living out in California. It was in a smokable form. Uh, we had it on top of some marijuana. And I laid down and I was looking up at the sky and I, I had this sensation. Now, like I said, I've never blasted off from DMT. Some people feel like they leave this plane of existence. That that wasn't my experience. But what I noticed was as I was looking up at the stars, I started seeing sort of like lines connecting the stars in the sky. And then they were sort of like connecting to stuff on the ground. And the way that I described, there was also this sensation that I experienced and the only way that I can describe it was I felt like I kind of could see the seams of the universe. Like the universe was a t-shirt and then the DMT turned the t-shirt inside out to where I could see where like the, the sleeve connected to the, the torso to where the seams were over here. That was sort of the overwhelming sensation that I got. Whoa. There's other parts yeah. of your brain that like light up when you're doing these yeah, drugs. Yeah, yeah. The parts that are lighting up that wouldn't normally is you using those parts of your brain you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. The parts of your brain that normally communicate, it's not even like new parts that are opening up, but also there's parts of the brain that normally communicate, and there's parts of the brain that maybe that they don't normally communicate. Absolutely. Yeah. When you do a psychedelic, yeah. you start seeing patterns where there weren't before, and the question is, do those patterns remain 
after the trip oh, yeah. or oh, yeah. do they sort of fizzle out or yeah. whatever I want to share my um, unfortunate experience so in April of 2019 I was I willingly took a wee brownie but I did not know that in said brownie were shrooms. How I was drugged, because let's be honest, I was drugged. I was drugged because even though I willingly took something, assuming it was one drug, it was another with the and with that person's intent for me to take this drug. So I met this person at my gym and we hit it off right away. And one night when we were hanging out, he uh, told me how he, his career is based off of holistic medicine. I believe in that. I believe you can heal yourself with taking things that don't involve you to go get Advil at CVS. But he took it to another degree of, I quickly realized and discovered from him telling me, he believed in other dimensions and the ways to get there were taking things like DMT and LSD. And he used to always tell me that I'm a clean aura, that the aura around me is white, and that this is my first time on this earth. And he basically believed in everything thing that's all on this conspiracy board, but twisted, out of context. If there was a conspiracy board on this person, none of the lines would connect. Like when he added two plus two, he got six. And then they, but then he would find justifications of how he got six. And he would pressure me every time we hung out that he wanted me to trip, that I needed to experience what a, what, what, what a trip felt like. Because he basically thought that I was, in his words, this like second coming of like the God he wanted. He thought because I was so clean, because I, this was my first time here, that I had never been reincarnated, that my body, my vessel was so clean that I needed to take this drug trip and meet the deity. He said, you'll take this, this drug, you'll meet the deities, and when you see them, they'll say, it's nice to meet you. I don't look so excited for our reading. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Gina Canone. Um, I do a lot of things. I'm a psychic medium. I'm also a master hypnotherapist, a Reiki master, and an author. The psychic medium part, you know, that word is kind of sometimes looked or down upon, but it could be intuitiveness or I've done medical in intuition too, so I kind of mix it up. I've been this way since I would say five years old and through the younger years, it was terrifying. Mm. And then I would see things or dream things and the next day it would happen. Or I would see somebody young and then I'd see them old, like 90 in, in a second. And I, and I like, you can't really understand why you're seeing these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but when dreams were happening and then the next day they, they happened, you know, after you dreamt them, you're like, I just dreamt this whole thing. Like, why, why is this happening? So that's clairvoyancy. But I just got stronger psychically. And the first part of being a psychic, uh, and a medium connecting with other side was it helped me with my own life mm. and then I would just help others like and not charge but then it got like where I was getting just busier and busier. like wow. I, gotta, I gotta like at least get something <laughs> so um, and people all the time say you don't even charge enough but you know what I want people I'm just a fair person that's interesting though because she started all of this but it's each one of these has gone towards profit Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. exactly. But so is religion. Like, religion was yes. not yeah. created to be based on, like, the commercialism of what it mm -hmm. is now. She didn't have, you know, monetary motives, but I think she But she did write two she... books that, what, did she sell these books? No, she sold a lot of these motherfucking books. So, so, yeah. so I think for she monetary, ended up realizing yeah. that she could make a lot of money from this. A medium is a psychic. But a psychic is not a medium. So a psychic will use their senses, clairvoyance, clairalience, smell, claircognizance, all these clairs, and it'll tell you about your future, maybe even a past life, and, and see forward, right? Mm -hmm. And a medium connects to the other side, and it's energy. And people always say, well, do you see somebody and see what they look like? Sometimes I can actually see something what they might have looked like when they were on earth but it's really 
for me, it comes through as energy. Mm. Um, I feel like you're tapping into higher power and energy and universal wisdom all at the same time. Okay. The readings have, I have nothing to do with them. I don't know what's going to happen. So it's always a surprise for me. I'll catch myself and I'll be like, is that true? Um, like in the yoga, the yoga philosophy as well, like when your third eye is really open, you're able to see things in, in your mind. So when it translated into like being psychic and stuff like that, the same thing would happen. I would channel out to survey and see what, what whoever I'm reading. It's almost like I go out of it. I do, and I come back in. That's why I don't remember the readings back in like the old and the old times. But people that were um, usually the psychics, the shamans were were queer and were were gay because they had dual dual um, kind of that balance was already in alignment with them. Uh, somewhere I think it, it kind of falls in, but the third eye is always one of those things where it's um, yeah. I'm going to clear the air for you too. Mm -hmm. Ooh, see what happens today. Let me say my prayer for you. Do you have a grandfather that passed you were close to? Or do you not know him? I never knew either of my grandfathers. Because they're saying, he, I, we watch you, but he doesn't know us. Mm -hmm. So I feel like grandmother energy around you. Mm. She's doing this. This is my symbol to keep quiet, keep things low key, keep everything to yourself, and then you're gonna come out like a, like a firework. Okay? So. I got chills up the back of my neck. Keep quiet, keep to self. And then I see fireworks. Like I can't even draw fireworks, I'm an artist. I'm gonna and then come out, she's saying come out like firework. Out like fireworks. I always say, mm. "What? I'm, oh my god, I'm gonna cry. I'm really gonna cry right now." So one of my earliest memories is where my grandmother's from, the small town in Michigan. They have a Fourth of July parade, and it's like a people from out of state come to the Bessemer, Michigan Fourth of July celebration because they have a giant firework festival on the lake afterwards. And growing up, I used to love the fireworks. And then when I was uh, around 20 years old, I went. And I started getting emotional during the firework festival. And my cousin turned to me and said, like, why it's fireworks? And, like, and I said, because I hope to live my, my life one day where I come out like a firework. Oh my God. A letter E or L mean anything? No. Okay. Oh, E, yes, actually. Who's the my E? My sister. You forgot your sister? I know. <laughs> <laughs> It's psychic amnesia, I'm telling you. Everything is like, ah, oh, I don't remember until uh -huh. two minutes later. Somebody's bringing up a ring. A ring, a ring. You have somebody's ring? No. Did you lose a ring? Uh-uh. Did your mom? <gasps> My grandmother gave my sister a ring. Her friend stole it recently, and she just was able to get it back. Is this her ring? Yes, it was her ring. She's bringing up her ring, someone lost it. Yes, yes, and, and, and I think the reason why she's bringing it up because I was so angry at my sister. And I wrote, did mom lose it? Who lost it? Yeah, okay, so yeah, so my, my, my sister <laughs> left her, the, the ring on the counter of, of their house during a party. So obviously, of course, it's gonna go missing. And, 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 and her friend would claim that, that he put it on to like try it on and then it did, wouldn't come off and he, and he forgot to, to take it off. And, and, and then he left with it. And I was so angry at my sister. I just heard lie. The guy lied. Yeah, the lie, oh my God. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> Okay, Greg, it's your turn. <laughs> See what happens with you, okay? I feel a grandmother presence for you. You have a grandmother that passed? She's bringing up like the number one. Are you the first grandson? Or, mm -hmm. Okay, because she's going, you're my number one and 
the one means first or number one or first grandson. Ah, it's a tight bond to you with this tight bond. Well, she's saying I watch over you. Um, did she get sick suddenly? She's bringing up a sudden illness. Um, I feel like she thought she'd be okay and then she wasn't. So this snaps mean quick or sudden. When people from the other side want to to know, they, they want you, the person to know that it's them, they'll send you like a definite sign. Do pancakes mean anything? <laughs> she, I have to draw circles and I'm like, I don't know what they are. And she said, they're pancakes. So I'm gonna draw three and then I heard pancakes. So what do the pancakes mean? Uh, she would just make them for me when I was younger. And so she just, she wants you to remember that. So is this like a routine thing? I just, that's, I, if you like, told me like what meal would you remember her making? And that's her. So she wants you to know it's her that's watching over you. So that's how they, they kind of show me these things. I'm like, oh, okay, pancakes. Do you have a necklace of yeah. a coin? A coin necklace? No. Is it, a, is it her neck, a part of her necklace? No. Okay. She's showing me a necklace, so. But it's coin? It's round. I see something round okay. uh, on the bottom of it. Is it a, is it, um, is this handed to you from somebody? I have her ashes in a, uh, like a cylinder. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like, it's not mm -hmm. a circle, but it's, it's more of a, uh. Is it a necklace though? It's, it's on a chain. Yeah, she's showing me a necklace and it has to do with her so I thought maybe it was something something of hers yeah. but that makes sense if it's something of her it's her so she's just she's showing me it's my grandma. <laughs> so I had plans with my friend Tara shout out to Tara and we hang out every Saturday night and this is why she's always had standing plans with someone because in case you go fucking missing, they'll know how to find you. I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. But his roommate had made weed brownies or he told me they were weed brownies. And he told me how like a little bit would help my anxiety. Also, don't put sweets around me because it's like, like that is my drug. So I had a whole fucking brownie, not like thinking about it. I started to feel like, like, like not levitating, but I just started feeling like light, like air. Like I started to feel like I was air. I told him, I don't feel well, I need to lie down, I need to lie down. And then it was in this moment that I realized that I was a fucking idiot because now I'm stuck here. Cause now I'm too high to drive home. And I felt my entire body go limp. And I looked down at my phone and I was like, I just need to, I need to text Tara. I need to call Tara, I need to do something. And he's laughing and he's like having a good time. He thinks it's hilarious that I'm like tripping out. Then he takes my phone and he puts it all the way across the room on the dresser. And I'm thinking to myself, why did he take my phone? And then, and then he's like, just, just lay there, Sam. I'll, I'll come back for you. And he shuts the door and I hear it lock. And I'm thinking to myself, did he just lock me in the fucking guest room? Like why would he lock me in the guest room? And I'm lying in this bed alone and I remember looking up at the ceiling and all of a sudden I started saying words. Words started to appear, but in jumbled letters, right? Like almost as if uh, like alien, alien writing. And then like it's decoded into the word, like for fucking mushrooms. It's like all these like hieroglyphics. And then all of a sudden it becomes the word mushroom. In the other side of the room, I saw my five-year-old self. And it was my five-year-old self learning words. Like like the moment in time I learned what the word rhino was. I learned what the word couch was. And then all of a sudden, I saw my 15-year-old self. And I saw my 15-year-old self learning words. And then, and then my 20-year-old self. I was literally going through my entire, visualizing, seeing my young self on the other side of the room. Little five-year-old Sam learning these words. Do you have a grandfather you were close to? Yeah. 
What letter G or J mean anything? Yeah, J. That's him. I feel grandfather energy around you. Letter J. I feel a very tight bond with you, with him. He's doing fingers crossed for you. Fingers crossed means tight bond to you. So he is, he is a, he's a strong spirit guide for you. So a spirit guide is a person who has passed that was human and left, okay? They're not angels, they're spirit guides. And his job is to help you and watch over you. Was he tough? Was he military? because he showed me a uniform and he sounds tough yeah. in, in his energy. Um, he and my dad. Ah, okay. Military. Was he in the army? Yeah. He, he specifically said arm is in the army. He's proud to be in the army. <laughs> are you trying to figure out, um, are you getting like a new job or is a change? There's change coming for you. It looks, to me, change looks like a steering wheel. So I draw it like, like um, arrows, like you're turning a wheel. So there's gonna be a lot of change for you this year. I, I feel like you're not, also you're not balanced yet. I'm hoping that after this investigation, I find my balance too. The shift is, uh, it's telling you multiple times because this, it, something's gonna have to break and actually take the lead and take a little bit more of like the, not the initiative, but the initiative to say, you know what, I'm getting on, but, Y'all are doing this wrong. I'm gonna guide the ship. I'm going to revamp everything. So um, it will, if you let go of it, it will uh, reverse itself back out and you will have more of a, um, you'll feel more powerful. I feel like the universe can send us things. And then when they do, sometimes you could be afraid to take the opportunity and saying, don't be afraid. You just take the new job, go get what you want, okay? Take new job, go get it. A lot of change coming though this year, but you make you make this happen. This is a power year, 2020. You can manifest a lot this year. So once you put it in the atmosphere, it's going to come to you. Okay, you can manifest. The thing I need to teach you about manifesting is don't say a positive and then overlap it with a negative. Like, oh, I really want to get this new job, but I probably won't get it. You won't get it if you say that. Everything I stop at the positive. Oh, I want to do this speaking event and I'm going to get that. And this one's going to call me. Guess what? Every day I got something calling me. Somebody's calling me. Yeah, I need this. I don't overlap anything with negative. You can manifest everything. I'm getting this. That's it. So I'm going to do that. And that's that. That's it. Um, do you have a grandmother that passed that you were close to? Yes. She's with you. The letter E or L mean anything? No. Not to pertain to her, but it could be anybody. I'm going to throw initials out that may. The name David mean anything? D? Not your name, but the letter D for somebody else? Um, no. And the letter C or K is coming up. C. Is your grandmother? Mm -mm. There's a wavy line when they show me this. Mm -hmm. It means you're having a hard time with something. Mm -hmm. Difficult decision or a hard time. I've been thinking, I've been going back and forth, like, am I gonna leave? Am I gonna quit? What am I gonna do? Readings are always telling you kind of like what's to come so you're prepared for it energetically. It's gonna take a little time to get through this. So you're in a difficult period right now. She's doing two hands down like this. My symbol, this means to stay calm, calm down. It's all gonna come your way. Just be a little patient. I also see books around you. So after this comes in, you'll start to feel like, oh, I have this really good idea. I wanna do this, I wanna move forward in this. Keep it to yourself. It, it sends your money in reverse. I also just started going back to school. That's where when you said like, the money might go out, um, but it's, it's still like. It's still circulating, it's still there. Yeah. yeah. Are you going back to school for something or certification? Yes. Are you getting a tattoo? Uh, yes. She's bringing up the tattoo. Uh, did you get it or are you getting it? I'm getting it. Because she, she says it's okay. I like it. Somebody doesn't want you to get it. Yeah. But she's saying it's okay to get. Somebody, somebody doesn't want you to get it and she's saying but get it oh 
What is it? A wave. Nice. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm the one who's been telling her not to get that tattoo. I texted But you don't want her to get it either? I don't want her to get it either. Right now, if you feel like you're going through a crisis, don't cut your hair, don't get a tattoo, because then... I went and got three tattoos in one day. <laughs> I got a cross, I got Gandhi's... Gandhi's words oh down my, my side and I got this, still I rise. The guy goes, you're going to do all three in one day? I'm like, yeah, I want two glasses of wine. I'm staying here, <laughs> and I'm staying here all day. <laughs> so there are seven chakras throughout the body and I'm sure maybe you in your investigation you found that the number seven shows up in many different places. There's seven deadly sins. There's seven headings. There's, you know, the, the number seven in general is a, is a very powerfully magical number. I want to get behind this numerology shit. I want to get to the bottom of why after my breakup, since my breakup two years ago, I cannot stop seeing 777 everywhere in my life. And I kept having dreams. The dreams never meant anything, but in the same moment in the dream, I kept receiving a text message from him. And all the text message said was 777. Oh, yeah. Numerology is a belief in the divine or mystical relationship between a number and one or more coinciding events. It is believed that your date of birth and your name are not randomly chosen. Rather, they are predetermined by your soul before birth. Numerology helps you discover your inner needs, characteristics and talents, and areas of potential success. Encountering angel number seven over and over again means that positive things are flowing free towards you at this time. Encountering angel number 777, however, means you are on the right path and living your divine life purpose. And the, over the course of that following year, every time I did something great that I felt like was my destiny, 777 would be part of it. It would either be a phone number and there's three sevens in it. It ought to be an address to something. What is your address? One. Exactly. Look at her fucking house number. What? This is, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's crazy. I know it sounds crazy. Um, my, my tattoo. Seven. <laughs> oh, oh God. <laughs> it's up to you whether or not you think that's a coincidence. Really. Hi, mom. Hi. <laughs> so, as you know, we are filming the second investigation of the Shmi Investigate series. And I've talked about this so many times about how 777 has followed me everywhere. Is it three sevens or just the number Well, seven? it's just the number seven. Okay. But things keep happening in groups of seven. My phone number has three sevens. My debit card has three sevens. Um, I realized my exit off of the turnpike is exit seven. The reason why I have asked you mm. to um, speak to me today is because you said you have this story. I do. And I'm going to be kind of vague about it because it's really personal. Okay. But there was a time um, in my life where I was, you know, suffering from postpartum depression and I was faced with a decision um, and I was going to, you know, I was had made the decision and was, you know, trying to um, coordinate things, you know, to, you know, to carry out my plan. And I just all of a sudden started seeing all of these sevens everywhere. So like, you know, there was a show that came on that was called Seventh Heaven, Okay. you know, but I would just be out somewhere and just see sevens like it, it was either like a count of seven or I'd see a seven, like a seven of something or it's just the number seven kept sort of popping up um, in all these like random situations and random um, circumstances that it changed my mind and changed my plan mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. therefore changed the rest of my life. Ah! I was in a really deep, dark place, um, having suffered a traumatic event 
And um, I was going to make this life changing decision mm -hmm, mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. that state, which mm -hmm. is not a great state no, to be making no. life changing decisions. Yeah, 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 yeah. And somehow the universe was like, no, it's the wrong decision, you know, and just started sending me all these messages and said, you know, the, and then the, at least I was able to recognize those messages, That's you know, insane. and changed. Um, the course of my life but just the fact that I was going to you know make this life-changing decision you know in a place where you know like I probably wasn't mentally able to make really yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know yeah, yeah. smart decisions yes yes and I just you know something intervened and okay. started sending me all these messages enough that I caught on. Of course, I'm sure the first few times I didn't catch on. Th that happened but to me. But then yeah, all yeah. of a sudden, it's like, what is up with all these sevens? Well, that's crazy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm literally in this moment, lying on this bed, reliving every moment of my entire life over again, watching where things went wrong, how I could of course correct in my life. It was fucking crazy. I felt a burning sensation throughout my entire body. And in my mind, the first thing that I heard as if someone whispered it was I was burning every bad part of my life to the ground. I was burning every aspect of my life where I didn't like, as if it was, as if I was like reincarnating in that moment or like coming back to life like a phoenix. It was fucking crazy. And then eventually he came back into the room he brought me downstairs i'm sitting on his couch and this was like my fucking breaking point it was as if all of a sudden my body started to become solid again and i that fire was just like it was going from my feet to my head and just centering right onto my stomach and i felt this fire on my stomach the shrooms which are fucking food poison it triggered and i started and i just projectile vomit like fucking exorcist it was just like, like and it was like this nasty yellow color of just like poison just just like just like vomiting out of my fucking bo my body you know like the fight or flight mentality where in so in a moment you think to yourself it's either do or die I thought, I need to fucking shower myself off, I need to grab my cell phone, and I need to get the fuck up out of this house. Because I like people to, to believe that you can change your life and be, think positive. Mm -hmm. You can draw from energy all the positiveness that you need for your life, mm -hmm. you know, and it's there to help you and guide you. I ready for this? For this fucking plot twist? For for the other shoe to drop? This is the plot twist of the Astral Post Office. Was she a fraud? Dana, what do you think? Absolutely. While living in Huddlestone Gardens, the headquarters of the Theosophical Society in India, Blavatsky continued to be visited by the masters. From 1881 to 1886, over 145 letters written by the masters were received by anyone Blavatsky wanted to influence. So sometimes I do what's called the pendulum. Um, this is one of the first methods of divination. It's interesting to see um, something swing in a direction. If you hold it over the person, if it swings left, there's an illness or something wrong. When someone doubted that she was who she said she was, they would receive a letter convincing them. The idea of the Brotherhood was what convinced people. The idea of a group that's looking out for the best interests of the world, that reincarnate when the world needs them the most. Someone who's keeping track of things, that it's not just all chaos. But were these letters genuine? Where does the energy come from that moves this? So it comes through you. You might hear yes, and then it'll swing yes. Energetically, you'll feel something and you'll be like, I'm not doing anything and the thing's moving. So what was that? I don't know, what was that? I don't know. Ugh. The shrine room was a room inside the headquarters that had a cabinet on the wall, which inside letters from the masters would appear. A person would speak a concern or question, and within minutes, a letter answering them would appear. But it did not take long for suspicion to arise. Am I going to move to New York City this year? Ew. Ew. It 
saying yes. Yeah, that's it. Will Sam and I still be best friends after he moves? <laughs> no! <laughs> You'll be more than that. <laughs> that is not funny. Two household employees confessed to a Christian magazine that they assisted Blavatsky in fraudulent phenomenon, stuffing the letters through a hole in the wall behind the shrine. Because he doesn't want us to know his questions. Oh. Blavatsky and the doubt of the existence of the masters became a scandal of fraud. The Society for Physical Research went to India and investigated Blavatsky and the Theosophical Society. Well, the investigation series becomes something bigger. Richard Hodgent, the investigator, came to the conclusion that there is no secret brotherhood of masters and every single letter was fraudulent. The Hodgent report forever condemned Blavatsky, one of the most ingenious imposters in history. So Dana, Ryan, and Greg all laugh at me because um, I want to know your thoughts. What do you know about or what do you think about the theory of astral projection? Oh, I love it. <laughs> and when I have sleep paralysis, like apparently that means that you're astral projecting. I open up all the drawers and all the doors. Yeah, what does that mean for Dana? It's not the easiest thing for people to do. So if, you, if it's coming a little bit easier for you, that might be one of your gifts that you've been given. It's quite beautiful. So I've done it. I've <laughs> well, sleep paralysis, I, the, the one that I've had, are traumatizing. They're like... Yeah, but you're going to have to learn how to control it. You're going to have to learn how to control it. I call Tara, I get, I get his address, and then she's like, and she thinks it's funny because she doesn't know the, the severity of it. Because I, because all I said at this point was I took a weed brownie because I still did not know that I was on shrooms. Tara comes, she picks me up. Her side of the story is the second she walked in, he looked like he just got like caught right handed doing something he shouldn't have been doing. She's like, what the fuck? I explained to her exactly what happened. She's like, okay, this is a lot more than just you being tripped out in a weed brownie. A month and a half later, I go get my hair cut at my hair salon, which is right next to a psychic shop. The girl massaging my hair, I'm telling everyone the story. I'm telling everyone this, this, this drug trip story. She goes, that was not pot. She goes, that was shrooms. She goes, I've done shrooms many times. She goes, what happened was you took shrooms, didn't know you did shrooms. The vomit is because you were on shrooms. You poisoned yourself. He grew shrooms in his basement because one of the times that we hung out, I was helping him move stuff upstairs for his yard sale. I opened up this random cabinet and there were literal shrooms growing inside of it. So what did he do? He made brownies with the intent to drug me because he thought it would help me see the light and I would be a believer. I remember the one, the one thing I do remember him saying is when I was tripping out um, and, and he said, how do you feel? And I said, I feel like I'm going places. And he, I never forget. Oh, I, okay, here we go. Okay, I can't. I'm getting emotional. Um, I remember he said, oh, you're going places. It was like he knew what he was doing. Like he knew what he was fucking doing. And plot twist, bitch, I didn't go anywhere, all right? Yeah, back to my couch and I had Domino's pizza, apparently. Apparently I became home when we ordered Domino's. I fucking scarfed that shit down. And... Good call. <laughs> you replaced all that. I had the munchies up. in the end, so yeah. maybe it was a little pot in that brownie. Three, two, one. Okay, so in a fight, who would win? Teresa Caputo, or Raven Simone as her character Raven Baxter from her hit show, That's So Raven. Shame, begin. Round one. Teresa Caputo. Uh, Teresa Caputo. <laughs> Teresa would, with those nails, she would scratch the shit out of Raven. <laughs> Professor X of the X-Men versus Miss Cleo. 
down too. <laughs> Miss Cleo. <laughs> put some voodoo shit on <laughs> Uh, Miss Cleo. Professor X has some pretty serious powers, so I think we might have to go with Professor X. Whoopi Goldberg in the 1990 hit movie Ghost or Helena Blavatsky? Round three. Ah, Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the right hook with the... I'm giving it to Helena. Oh, um, oh, man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Not even a question. <laughs> Dana or Sam? How did you know that? And I'm seeing the letter T. <laughs> Sam. Hey! Oh, I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> All right, that was it. System shut down. Figure will happen only with intense focus. It's this different kind of focus that I'm writing for you. I kind of got that for myself this year, and I really had to buckle down, like to what is it? And I manifested every. I'm manifesting everything already. It's all coming in. So, and it's funny. You're part of. You're part of my manifest. Really. And it's just the oddest thing. It's it's about intense focus and asking higher power and, and the universe to put the right people together at the right time and and it's all for a higher good and for good reason and for good purpose so i want to say this experience was better than i ever thought it was going to be because when i first came up with this idea to do spirituality again i talked about this i had no idea and like gina said tonight this is a power year 2020 you can manifest a lot this year so once you put it in the atmosphere is going to come to you. And you'll get what you want. You talk to talk to spirit and, and you get what you want. You know, meeting Sal, doing yoga with Rob, having her meeting with Gina, talking to my mom. I'm at a 10. I believe in this. I believe that we are here for a purpose. And just like Theosophy says, that is spiritual emancipation. And I can say proudly right now that investigating spirituality has opened me up more than I thought it would. And I do feel like spiritually, my emancipation process is happening. For me, I wanted to find peace with everything because I'm the type of person that usually holds everything in. Mm -hmm. Going through all these exercises, I found new openings where I can kind of interject myself and bring something to my soul that will help balance it and bring me peace. So for me, I think I have found, found my balance, but I'm at an eight. Um, and Gina, wow. after connecting a lot of these pieces, helped me to realize that. Love so. that. With the tarot cards, there were, there were some instances that were very spot on specific and that's where i'm a little bit like okay maybe there is something and then with gina um there was a lot there were a lot of things in my reading that i was like okay um like my gr grandmother recently passing there was the going back to school um there was the tattoo thing that that kind of was like that was fucking what? crazy are you getting a tattoo uh yes I want to say like a five or a six. Okay. I'm not fully there, but in a couple months, if you come back and you ask me about like, maybe I manifested these things, maybe I didn't. So yeah. I would say a five or a six for right now. I, I don't know. I feel like I've definitely grown since we started shooting this. Mm -hmm. I gave it three points for yoga. Mm -hmm. Love yoga. Mm -hmm. Meditation, mm -hmm. another three points or at a six. I started meditating uh, almost a year ago and it's, changed my mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. really like mm -hmm. it's I'm, I'm a different person because of it mm -hmm. and then just everything with gina today i give it another three points so we're about a nine mm -hmm. and then the astral projection i think i astral projected into <laughs> someone's body in michigan brings it down three so i'm at like a six okay all right i take it i will but take it when it's all said and done i think everything that we talked about makes you feel better as a person. Even if Gina's stuff isn't the truth, 
or people don't believe it. Yeah. The fact that we all went in, listened to her, and we believed it mm -hmm. means something. And I think that's exactly what spirituality is. So what is spirituality? Are there multiple levels to our consciousness? Was Helena Blavatsky a fraud? I don't have the answers to these questions. Everything in life, including reality as we know it, is up for interpretation. Whether meditating seven days a week brings you peace or meeting with your spiritual advisor every six months to realign your soul, your spirituality, is up for you to decide. They may call your beliefs in the astral plane crazy, but that doesn't make it any less real. Remember, Helena Blavatsky believed in one thing, one thing we all deserve in life. Freedom. So was she a fraud? I'll let you decide. Are you wanting a tattoo? A little one? Yeah. She, you're gonna go with her and you're gonna get your little one done. Oh my God, we were Dana and I were talking about that. Dana was like, Sam, we need to go get tattoos for the, for, for the episode together. Get your little tattoo. Uh, uh, and I see you with Dana. Oh. And you get, you get it all done together. Oh my God. I gotta write done with Dana. Uh, uh, uh. That's nowhere. That's, no, that's, that's nowhere. When I awake from my sleep and look out on the sun shining, I feel like it's where you want to see it. The smile across my face. When I look out at the horizon, the sun, it warms the earth each day. We can see from the light provided, whether you walk in the street or till in the field, be content with the time you're allotted. There are Times when the sun ain't warm enough And it feels like you've been slighted Look to the brother at your left And the sister at your right Drink up the milk of human kindness For we all have so much love to give From all the love We've been given the beauty we can see in all the colors in the trees is enough to make me thankful to be living. When I lay down my head to sleep, a full day's time behind me, I'm so thankful for the people in the beauty that I see I can't help myself to keep from smiling I can't help myself to keep from smiling driveway we back up hold on i i want that moment on camera you want hold me on. to back up no no, no. Just, just turn around <laughs> they turn around oh my god buildings every time that she was like oh <laughs> this like oh this generalization or whatever you you went in and you were like oh shit that's this can i wear well, a well, mask when i get red 
why? Because I don't want to give anything away. <laughs> I'm gonna get a Lone Ranger mask. I mean, I mean, I, we could just blindfold her. I think we just need so, like, when I've had <laughs> when I've had sleep paralysis in the past, where I've literally been like a tree or a plant that's like I'm rooted into the yeah, ground. Yeah. That's me, like it probably. Wait, when the fuck did you have that? Like. <laughs> I don't tell you about all oh, my secrets. How did she fucking know that I plan on moving? And she goes, "It's gonna be in the summer, bitch." My lease is up in June. And mind her, I her clothes, and she's doing this shit too, which is like freaky. The house, like she's just like, you know, which um, is like what? Freaky the house. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> on today's episode of Sam's Dictionary. We are explaining the phrase, the house. So the house is a gay slang phrase that means oh my God. It, it is like that is the, the thing. So meaning it's, it's at the top level of what it could be. So meaning if, for instance, if there's glass in your coffee cup that you're drinking from Dunkin' Donuts and you realize, oh my God, I could sue them. It's like lawsuit the house. Meaning, that's your example. Meaning, you yeah. know, <laughs> you you could, you know, it, 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 like that's what it is. Like it's a big lawsuit. Freaking the house. Stop so. trying to make fetch happen. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> that's, that's me. That's literally me. Okay. Investigation two, done.